when we caught up to Rocky again, we saw him impaled with like what I assumed to be the the kind of shards or the fragments from the destroyer, and like we saw him impaled with a couple of those, and I think that's basically all we saw, right? So I'm interested to see what exactly happened. Okay. Um, wait, Priscilla. <laughs> Uh, what do you mean you have to find the scent you were looking for? Exactly that. And she's smiling too, dude, in, in, that, in that panel down there. Okay. Um, for a long time, I have been looking for the faint smell that clings to you. A faint smell clinging to me. Uh, yes, but so faint that it is about to disappear. It was there a little when we first met, but now it is completely gone. But I smelled it clearly when what's... When what's stuck in you was stuck in me. What I'm looking for is the source, so I'm done with you. Now I'm heading there. Tell me one thing. What is the smell that was on me? So that's the only reason she stayed with Rocky all these years was just for that smell. That's kind of messed up, man. I actually thought that there was like something there like between them. Like maybe actually Priscilla like saw him as a father figure or, or something like that i don't know but I, I thought there was something more there between them so it's like damn i kind of feel bad for rocky like that's that's the only reason why she was with him um all right so what is the smell that was on me i don't know i myself want to find out but it disappeared with time so it must not be you or your family but, alright, thanks to your guidance this far, it appears I will finally reach the source of that smell I've been searching for, so... I will express my gratitude. <clears throat> and I'm trying to think, like... Is is maybe her memories kind of uh, have something to do with this? Because I totally forgot when she exactly regained her memories of, like... Um, and remember, I think it was the last volume where she said that she had, like, purposely, like, tried to, like, uh, restrain herself from, like, remembering those mem those those memories, right? Um, I'm trying to think, did that happen, like, when she was already, you know, encountered Claire and, and the Destroyer and all that? Or did that happen around this time? Um, and that's why she's acting so differently to Rocky? Or was just was this just a facade from the beginning? Like, her just wanting to be with Rocky just to, to find the source of the smell? Because, like, I'm finding it hard to believe that she would, like... That this was fake the entire time. So, yeah, I don't know, man. It, it probably... It, it, she probably was just, uh, like, just putting on a, a face the entire time next to Rocky. But, man, I, that really saddens me. Um, okay... Okay, so I have to go back really quick. Okay, so she said that I will express my gratitude. So she just chopped off Rocky's... That doesn't make sense, because she just chopped off, like, basically the forearm. And then we see in this panel the, the shards or whatever, like, impaled into his shoulder. So I don't know, wouldn't she want to, like, take off the entire arm or, or what? I don't know. Um... Anyway, day, you have returned. What is that hand? Um, I have no idea. I would like you. To, I would like to ask you that. I found a strange man in the West. He had projectiles embedded in him that came from a form of strength comparable to an abyssal one. He was in agony. Usually, such objects will eat into the victim's flesh and cause him to die. But that man was not corrupted or killed, and lived on in possession of his human consciousness. Fascinated, I carefully transported him back to the organization. The reason he was not corrupted is strikingly simple. This left hand stuck into his back. Countered the effect of that which corrupts anything living. So that's Priscilla's arm? What? Weird. I'm trying to think... Priscilla had both of her arms, right, when she fought Claire, but it probably isn't, like, too tasking for her just to regenerate it back or something like that, so, okay. Um, I would now like to ask you once more, whose hand is this? To my knowledge, nothing in this land surpasses an abyssal one, but this hand easily surpassed power uh, comparable to that of an abyssal one. 
Of course, the objects were not the main body, but something like offshoots from it. Nonetheless, I sense a will that appears to surpass an abyssal one coming from this hand. That's, that's an understatement. <laughs> um, the problem isn't the existence of such a being, but our ignorance of it. Why do I not know about an entity of such strength? Why have I not even suspected the existence of such a one? I mean, yeah, I think it is kind of foolish to think that, like, it stopped after the Abyssal Ones, you know? Like, I feel like there will always be something stronger than the thing that came before it, right? Or something like that. Like, there will always be something more powerful out there. So, they, they should have considered that at least, right? Um... Alright, so what are you trying to say? Of course, one reason may be that the entity did not act openly, but I think there is a possibility that someone has intentionally dis, uh, distorted and hidden that information. Well, that is not within my domain, so I will not pry any further. Let us change our perspective. I ask you, my brothers, what is the standard by which an abyssal one is an abyssal one? It was a name given to a number one who had awakened. Exactly. Number one, in the male period, Eastley the Silver, who lives in the north, the youngest ever to climb to number one, uh, to number one, and press refull, the empress who lives in the west. Huh. Okay, okay, I, I don't know why that was just like, that came out weird to me or something like that, but okay. The youngest ever to climb to number one, and then he's talking about empress refull, and the empress who lives in the west, or the empress who lives in the west. All right, I don't know why that bubble is so weird to me. I don't know. Um, and Luciello, the eldest of the sisters who awakened in a failed experiment in Yoma power harmonization. Uh, tell me the names of the warriors with the capacity to surpass them. Aside from whether they can be surpassed, those number ones whose uh, lives ended without awakening are... L let me know in, in the comments below, because... I'm I'm trying to think is was Refool is he saying is he saying that Refool I don't think he's saying that Refool was a number one in the past right the youngest ever to climb to number one I think he is Refool used to be number one did did we know that before because I don't remember that ever being a thing wow okay no wonder why why that that text bubble was so strange to me because I was like him talking about number one and then directly going to refool was just like like not registering to me but okay interesting yeah i don't know if if we if we knew that before and it just slipped my mind but wow i honestly did not remember refool actually being a, a past number one interesting okay so i'll show you guys these pages not much to look at, like, art-wise, it's just, like, the organization, like, talking to each other, so that's pretty boring, but it's whatever. Uh, the conversation's interesting, at least. Um, Hysteria the Elegant, Three-Armed Like, Chloe of the Heavy Sword, and Sistina the Divine Oracle. Let's go back really quick. Um... So tell me the names of warriors with the capacity to surpass them. Okay, so he's... He's straight up wanting to know, are there people that can surpass Rifu, Luciella, and Eastley? Interesting. And he's saying Hysteria, uh, Three-Armed Like, and Chloe of the Heavy Sword, and Sestina, the Divine Oracle. Roxanne of Love and Hate, who caused quite a bit of trouble. Teresa of the Faint Smile, and Universal Lutetia. There were also Cassandra, the Dust Eater, and others. Uh, so the fact that, you know, they, they're talking about, or they mentioned Teresa makes me think, first of all, it's so cool that Teresa actually, like, like, surpassed, or was obviously stronger than, you know, than Refull and, and Eastley and Luciel, that she was above Abyssal once, man, it's just like, it's so cool just to get that reminder of Teresa's strength, right? Um, okay, so... I'm assuming that all of these prior claymores that, that they're talking about um, are no longer in the picture, that they're probably dead, right? That they're from an era of claymores that came, like, probably before Teresa, maybe? I'm assuming? I don't know. Um, 
Because it sounds like they don't have really anyone who are, you know, at that level currently in the organization. Um, okay, and others. The list is endless, but those were particularly powerful. But we have confirmed the deaths of all of those. Okay, wow. As the one who examined their corpses, you know that better than anyone. Then how about the ones who killed them? Who killed them? Aside from black... Uh, cards and purges. There are no reports of warriors killing each other. Hmm. That is somewhat unclear. I feel the terms purge and awakening cloud the truth. Anyway. <clears throat> I know it's probably too much to ask, but is this opening the door to possibly reviving prior uh, claim wars or something like that? Like, I don't think it's ever going to happen, but... I don't know. <laughs> uh, clarifying the identity of that left hand is in your domain. Pester us all you want, but none of us can provide as clear an answer as you. Oh my, thank you for such lavish praise. I entrust the matter to you. This discussion is over. Uh, that annoying man has returned. Uh, limped. Under these circumstances, do you think I could be allowed to pursue the project I uh, proposed? I heard it was officially scrapped. But look at the current situation. An unidentified awakened being at the level of an abyssal one. A mysterious group prowling the lands, disaffecting warriors. And I see signs of an attack on the organization that is yet unbeknownst to me. I mean, that is true. You guys, this is probably like a really, really weird time for, for the organization. Like, you know, Maria and everything that she's been able to dig up about you guys is like finally you know like coming up to the surface and now like a lot of people are aware of like the true nature of the organization so like they have to worry about that now they have to worry about this looming threat of priscilla sometime in the future right um so yeah i feel like it's definitely like i don't know if this is like uncharted territory for them if they've ever had this I mean, obviously, they've had to deal with the Abyssal ones in, in, in the past, but obviously, Priscilla is just, like, on a whole nother level, and they I don't think they've ever had to deal with, uh, you know, Claymore's actually learning of the organization's true intentions and things like that, so, yeah, this must be very, very stressful for them, maybe, I don't know, um... So rather than slowly raising the warriors we have now, I thought to quickly increase our military might. To be honest, the organization is uh, threadbare at the moment. How likely is success? I got, my, I got my hands on some good material while making the rounds this time. So the probability of success is higher than ever before. How many can you make? This time I plan to use this. So at this scope, about three. Alright, I approve it. But should even the smallest problem arise, we will dispose of it all, including your specimens. They may be relatively undamaged, but I cannot understand why you would keep the corpses of past number ones. <laughs> what? <laughs> the bodies of warriors whose strength is complete. Teresa to No, 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 no. I don't know. That just clicked with me right now. <laughs> Dude, I almost don't want to see her come back. Like... If, if this dude is going to, like, mess around with her body, I would rather her not come back into this manga, honestly. <laughs> um, and just think about, like, how, like, that's gonna have a ripple effect on how that later, if, if this happens, if Teresa somehow comes back, but, like, how that's going to affect Priscilla, how that's going to affect Claire, like, oh, man, dude. Okay, so, um... So to, to me, our works we should be proud of and devoted to as objects of study. I don't want to hear about your uh, proclivities. The dead should stay dead and should not walk. <sighs> oh man, okay. So 63 Yoma, 11 awakened beings, and 7 warriors. That is all the Yoma energy I can sense toward the east from here. Whoa, that's quite a lot. Everyone but Tabitha has finished releasing Yoma power. Just in case, should we take the drug to, uh, to suppress our Yoma energy? That isn't necessary. I can sense opponents. Yoma energy faster than they can, than they can. So we will just take routes that our opponents won't notice. Oh, hey Tabitha, use this. It must be a pain to always carry your claymore. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's cool seeing uh, 
that of uh I don't know, like, <laughs> like be nice to her. I don't know, kind of like at least a little bit trying to embrace that that leadership position, um, helping out a teammate. All right, guys. Uh, about our route before the organization assigned me to the south, there were a little known path leading to the organization on a mountain to the north of here, where I was in charge. It would take us somewhat out of our way, but we should be able to avoid any more warriors and awakened beings than necessary. A mountain path to the north, huh? Um, is that better than heading east and adjusting our, right, our route to the enemy's movement? On the mountain path to the north, I sensed the Yoma energy of four warriors. They appear to be heading towards the organization. One among them is fairly big. Possibly a single digit number. They assigned the north to number seven, but perhaps the organization called her back because of the present situation. Uh, then we should avoid the northern route. Encountering a single digit in these circumstances would be, wait, something with strange Yoma energy is approaching them. <clears throat> I wonder if this has to do with a volume cover. Let's see. Uh, they sure do keep us busy, suddenly ordering us north and ordering us back. I'm glad it was depressing uh, staying so long in that desol desolate place. I was starting to like that empty silver world. Help me, what's going on? A human in a place like this? Oh no, I don't want to turn into that. Please calm yourself. What in the world? Um, Alright, we got some fighting. Man, he, this this girl has like a beautiful design, man. Like the hair. Uh, what the hell? She's floating on air? Didn't you guys know? That's how she fights. Yeah, I really love her hairstyle. Um, she's the organization's number seven, also known as Winged Anastasia. Cool. I will not forgive you for hurting my friends. Um, help us. There are more of them. It seems we came the wrong way. Alright, that's the end of the chapter. Anastasia Hype, I guess, man. Uh, she, she seems pretty cool. Um, cool. Yeah, I mean, not much to say for her, but I'm, I'm excited to see what she's, what she's gonna do. Um, I wanna talk, I mean, this video has been, I didn't think this video would be so long, but like, man, I'm almost at 20 minutes already. Um, but really quickly, man, I, obviously the biggest thing to me in this chapter was the uh, apparent revival of the dead that's going to happen of all the previous number ones, including Teresa as well. Um, apparently this is, this has been a thing that this guy has been working on, like seemingly on and off, I guess. Uh, he hasn't really been able to, to quite like figure it out because it's been shut down, I believe a couple times or whatever. Um, but he's obviously going to get it right this time, right? <laughs> I would assume. Um, and now he has a part of, uh, I mean, he's got Priscilla's arm, right? Um, so I'm, I'm curious how exactly is that? Like, it's a, like, does a bit of Priscilla's power get like sprinkled into all of these, uh, uh, num past number one claymores? making them that much even like that much more powerful um i mean then i feel like that makes me wonder just how much of priscilla's overall strength and power is in that one hand right like you would have to assume i'm just throwing out a wild number but like maybe like 20 percent of like her raw power is in that one arm maybe i i, I don't know um but I would I would have to believe that that's probably gonna give these number ones like a pretty big boost, um, if my line of thinking is correct that he's going to like use that to revive them or whatever I don't know, um, but yeah I'm I'm really curious to see like, I mean it's really interesting that this guy I mean he's right I feel like the the claymores like how they are in this era like how they currently are right now are just not going to get the job done I mean you see how easily uh Maria was just able to come in and cut down basically like everyone that was protecting the organization 
and then you add it, you add on top of the fact that you have you know these the seven ghosts eventually coming after the organization and then you have priscilla as well eventually going to come after the, the organization maybe but you do have that threat out there i i don't blame them for thinking that the way we are now we're not going to survive like we need to bolster our defenses like we need to bolster the claymores that we have um or just our our, our strength right now we need to get stronger so i i don't begrudge them thinking that for sure uh it's pretty logical uh, but the way that they are doing it, man, was something I did not anticipate at all. I did not even think about the, I didn't even think that there had been so many previous number one claymores. Like, it, it just, like, I don't know, it, it's crazy, man. Uh, he listed at least, like, seven or something, right? Like, that that's insane to me. Um, before I, I do my outro, like, comment, subscribe for more claymore and all that stuff. Let's really quickly go through those names, man. Um... So obviously we had we had Teresa in there of the faint smile, um, Hyster Hysteria the elegant. I'm excited for that. The elegant sounds really cool. Three armed like, uh, how what is her design going to look like? Uh, Chloe of the heavy sword. Okay, uh, Sestina of the of the divine oracle. Roxanne of love and hate. That sounds really cool. Um, who caused quite a lot of bit of trouble. So that one in particular. I, I'm probably the most hyped to see because this one seemed like maybe the organization really couldn't exactly control her or maybe she was like a rebel and she just went off and did her own thing from time to time. Um, who knows, man? Uh, Teresa, the faint smile, obviously, obviously. Uh, Universal Ludicia and Cassandra, the dust eater. And, and then he says others. So there's more. There's more. <laughs> so like... This is insane, man. Uh, crazy. Like I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what's gonna happen, dude. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Like, like, comment, subscribe for more Claymore, and I will see you guys in the next chapter. Uh, I'm excited, man, but I'm also terrified as well. So peace.